Coming up on Sports Center, we preview the two college football playoff semifinal games, give you the scores in and around the sports world, and the top headlines at midday. Good afternoon, this is Sports Center. I'm Matthew Marolino. It's 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time when you when we are recording this, and you're probably watching this around 12.15. We're going to begin with our preview of the college football playoff semifinals, starting with Cincinnati quarterback Desmond Ritter and his breakthrough Bearcats aren't caught up in what their unprecedented playoff appearance could eventually mean for other non-Power 5 teams. This is their journey. After a season-long debate about whether the Outsider deserved a spot in the CFP and being the only team to win every game along the way, the fourth-ranked Bearcats at 13-0 get their shot in the CFP semifinal Cotton Bowl today against top-ranked defending national champion Alabama. The SEC champion Crimson Tide is, a, is the playoff standard bearer. This is Alabama's seventh semi, semifinal appearance in the eight seasons of the four-team playoff. But the Tide most likely won't have made, wouldn't have made it back without Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Bryce Young leading a late-game tying 97-yard touchdown drive in the regular season finale against Auburn that ended in an overtime win. The sophomore first-year starter then set an SEC championship game record with 421 yards passing in a 41-24 victory over Georgia, which was undefeated before then and plays Michigan at the Orange Bowl in the other college football playoff semifinal that we'll preview in just a moment. Ritter is among more than 30 Cincinnati seniors, many who decided to return for an extra year with coach Luke Fickle after the Bearcats went 9-1 last season, with the only loss being 24-21 when Georgia kicked a last-second field goal in the New Year's Six Peach Bowl. Before sweeping through the American Athletic Conference, the, Bear, the Bearcats won 24-13 at Notre Dame the first Saturday of October. That was the only loss for the Fighting Irish, who wound up fifth in the CFP rankings on December 5th and the first team out while Cincinnati made history. Cincinnati still goes into the Cotton Bowl as a 13.5-point underdog. Alabama's only loss was 41-38 at Texas A&M on October 9th, a setback that got the Tide's attention. And just about everything and just about everything about this season has been a joyride for number two Michigan, the first team to start unranked in the AP Top 25 and reach the college football playoff. Reaching the playoff in 2021 was always the expectation for number three Georgia, and seemed like a foregone conclusion by November as the Bulldogs rampaged through their schedule. Not even a resounding loss to Alabama in the Sut in the SEC title game could keep Georgia out. But instead of bounding into the Orange Bowl semifinal off huge victories like Michigan, the Bulldogs enter trying to reestablish the air of invincibility they carried through much of the season. The Wolverines and Bulldogs are two storied programs that haven't played in more than half a century and took very different paths to their meeting tonight at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. The winningest program in college football history, Michigan doesn't fit the profile of an upstart, but few could have seen this breakthrough coming in year seven under John under Jim Harbaugh. Coming off a 2-4 and four record in 2020, the Wolverines used the doubters and critics of their coach as fuel. Center Andrew Vistardis wore a Michigan vs. Everybody t-shirt to a Zoom session with reporters earlier this week. After blowing a 16-point lead in the second half to Michigan State in their only loss on Halloween weekend, the Wolverines rallied late to win at Penn State, snapping an eight -game lose, snapped an eight-game losing streak to Ohio State and beat Iowa to win the Big Ten Championship for the first time since 2004. There is a different vibe around Georgia, however. Nobody doubted the Bulldogs would be a playoff contender this season, led by a defense stacked with blue-chip recruits and future NFL draft choices. They allowed, a le they allowed less than a touchdown per game through a 12-0 start, and then lost 41-27 to to Alabama. Georgia has not won a national title since 1980. While coaches and players don't worry about that, those who support the program do, and losing to Alabama brought on the here-we-go-again feelings for Bulldogs fans. The Wolverines, led by third-team All-America running back Hassan Haskins, averaged 229 yards, per, yards rushing per game, 5.31 yards per carry, and have scored 39 touchdowns on the ground, Georgia, led by Davis and all 
Georgia, led by Davis and All-America linebacker Nakobe Dean, has been an immovable object against the run, allowing 82 yards per game, 2.61 per attempt, and just three rushing touchdowns. While Alabama attacked Georgia's defense with a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Bryce Young and All-America receiver Jamison Williams, Michigan's calling card is the running game. And my prediction for this game, I don't have one. It's going to be a good one. That's just my prediction. We're going to go on to what's happening right now because there is some breaking news. There is a game going on right now is the breaking news. The Gator Bowl is going on right now. Number 17, Wake Forest, leading unranked Rutgers 17-10. to And as you watch this, the Sun Bowl has probably already started. It's 7-5 Washington State against 8-4 Central Michigan. And then, of course, 3-30 and 7-30, the two semifinal games that we hope to cover and break down for you here at the Mad Dog Matt YouTube channel. In top 25 men's basketball in college, it's number 18 Kentucky, currently leading high point at 6-7, seven, 7-3. Seven Kentucky should easily win that game. In the NBA today, uh, just one nationally televised game down in L.A. on NBA TV at 10-30, 13-21 Trailblazers against the 17-19 Lakers. And in the NHL, of course, three games postponed due to COVID, but uh, three games today, or four games today, sorry, all on ESPN Plus at 1. It's the Oilers against the Devils at 3. It's the Ducks against the Golden Knights at 7. The, Rain the Rangers take on the Lightning. And at 7.30, the Capitals take on the Red Wings. Now, there is some breaking news. Minnesota Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins has tested positive for COVID-19. Cousins had symptoms self-reported and then tested positive for the virus, according to sources. As an unvaccinated, as an unvaccinated player, he's out for Sunday night's game against the Green Bay Packers. The Vikings have to win in Green Bay to keep their playoff hopes alive, which won't happen. Cousins lands on the reserve COVID list the same day backup quarterback Sean Mannion came off. Mannion, who is vaccinated, went on the list Sunday before exiting protocols Friday. Behind Mannion on the QB def chart is rookie Kellen Mund and Kyle Slaughter. Neither has played in a regular season game. San Antonio Spurs assistant Becky Hammond is finalizing a five-year deal with the WNBA's Las Vegas Aces that will make her the league's highest paid coach. Sources confirmed to ESPN today, or yesterday, sorry. Hammond plans to finish the season with the Spurs. A six-time All-Star during her playing career in the WNBA, Hammond has, a, has been an assistant under, under Spurs coach Greg Popovich since 2014. She has interviewed for several head coaching openings in the past, but hasn't gotten the offer to be the first woman to lead an NBA team. And three players in their first year of eligibility, including one of the league's all-time sack leaders, one of the league's all-time receiving leaders, and one of the league's all-time special teams greats, are finalists for the Pro Football Hall of Fame Class of 2022. Defensive end and outside linebacker Demarcus Ware, wide receiver Andre Johnson, and wide receiver slash returner Devin Hester are among the 15 finalists announced yesterday. It's the third time in the past five years at least three of the finalists are players in their first year of eligibility. As many as five of the finalists will be selected next month for the Hall's Class of 2022, the Class of 2022 enshrinement ceremony in Cannon, Ohio is expected to be in August, but, but specific dates have not yet been announced. Uh, that's all for SportsCenter at this 12 p.m. hour. I'm Matthew Merlino. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.